friends, Lynette here, and today I'm going to be expressing my love of silly hats. During my research into historical costuming, I've come across some headwear that you just absolutely have to stop and admire, such as these. I love this type of headwear, and I applaud those who wear it because there's something so unmistakably medieval about it that you just kind of have to stop and just look at it. So when I was looking through museum images, I came across these two absolute gems. And of course, I instantly said, I need one of these hoods. These pictures are from a manuscript dated 1348 called Le Roman de la Rose. So these open hoods don't date from my chosen time period for the SCA, which is the 1460s, 1470s decade. But I have a mighty need because they are so beautiful and silly. For this project, I'm using the last of my black cotton flannel, and I'm gonna line it with some stiff green linen. It doesn't appear to be lined in the original image. However, the black cotton flannel isn't going to be strong enough to support that curly cue, and that is something I 100% need because that is what makes this hood silly. All right then, let's get started. First thing I'm going to want to do is take my measurements for a mock-up. I measured around my head and divided that by half. I then measured from the top of my head to the bottom of my neck. You'll almost want to create a box shape with the measurements you took and then begin shaping. And the curly part is going to have to be free-handed. My curly cue comes two inches off the top of the hood and it is about three inches long. After the mock-up is finished, I typically wear it around my house for a few hours just to make sure I like the way it fits since I typically will be wearing this at all day events. Now my pattern measures 10 inches across and about 15 inches from the tip of the curly cue to the longest point on the bottom. So we really don't need much fabric to complete this. When originally cutting this, I left a larger seam allowance of just under half an inch. As I had originally planned on flat felling this, you can even do a seam allowance as small as a fourth of an inch. Just in case you're curious, cutting the curly part isn't fun. I then use my cut piece as a guide for my liner so the seam allowances match up. When sewing the pieces together, I used a straight stitch and then finished the seams with a zigzag stitch. I cut off the excess and turned my liner piece inside out. I highly recommend using something to make sure that the curly tails are properly fitted. A crochet hook or a chopstick will work just fine. Once I had it properly fitted, I pinned the curly tail so it wouldn't wiggle around so much. I did not want that liner moving out of there at all. I then folded over the edge of the shell and used a running stitch to hold it down. Once the shell was sewn, I wanted to see how much of the liner needed folded in and I just laid it flat. I wanted the shell to be just a smidge longer than the liner for aesthetic purposes. So I also ended up pinning the pieces together along the seam as the fabric at this point was actively fighting me. So this is off camera, but I did iron the hood so it would lay flatter and be more cooperative. And I found it much easier to pin the edges with the hood flipped inside out. Once it's pinned in a way I'm happy with, I'll sew the outside just using a whip stitch and making sure not to nab the shell fabric that's going to show. Once the hand sewing is done, you will have a brand new silly hat. It's beautiful. I am so happy. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It is so glorious. I love the curly part. That is precious. 
I have named these Smurf hats because it looks like something the Smurfs would wear. I don't know the actual name. If you happen to know, leave a comment down below. I would love to know the proper name so I can cross off Smurf hat on my pattern. I think more videos on historical hats would be fun. I really like a lot of those styles I had mentioned at the beginning of this video, and I'd like to see them brought to light. So I can't promise it'll be next or soon, but it's definitely a thought floating around in my head now. It's just so funny. So that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. I'm not sure which project. I've got a few of them floating around, so we'll see which one bubbles to the surface first.